Good afternoon, everybody. The time has come to announce the winning team of so many months and so much hours of work and so much presentation. So what I would like to do, I would like to invite the top three teams to come stand up here. Team Ale from Australia, please, can you guys come up? Team Athena from Zambia. Team Snipers from Ghana. So I'd like to hand over now to my friend Valentine to take the process further to welcome the number one team for 2016. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Hello. Good afternoon to everyone. Are you ready to hear? Hmm. Can we announce it tomorrow? Now. Okay. Say now, now, now. All right. Once again, it would not have been possible without our key sponsors, CFO South Africa Finance in Daba Africa. Uh, WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff, as well as the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, ACCA. I know you have the anticipation, you want to know who are the winners, but can we just do some formalities? I just need about three minutes of your time, or say six minutes. I am first going to call on stage the market head of ACCA South Africa, who has been phenomenal in supporting this. Please come on stage. Thank you so much. Next, I am going to invite uh, Professor Elias Links, who is the patron and award presenter. Next, I am going to invite the chief judge overall for the competition, Dion Fredericks, the CFO of Telcom. Okay, maybe you can be in the side. All right, please permit me, allow each of my key stakeholders here to give a two-minute statement about their experience, their support, and whatever they want to share with the finance community of South Africa and on the continent. Can we start with Pat Simenia, head of ACCA South Africa? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited for this afternoon. And I think, to be honest with you, in the last two days, we got to witness the most absolute outstanding talent. I promise you, this um, young students here were challenged beyond expectations because throughout the year, they had to balance their normal school workload. And also, they were stretched beyond things that an accounting degree on its own can never deliver. So, I mean, the, when I'm talking about those type of skills, I'm talking about skills around strategy. I'm talking about skills around corporate governance, ethics, social uh, soft skills as well. They were really, really challenged, and we really commend you on your performance. It's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. We at the ACCA, for example, we, have, we, we carry on year on year investing and injecting a lot of funds into research around um, the transformation of the accounting profession. And this type of uh, events actually talk to understanding that accounting degree on its own, it, it, it does not cut and cannot impart some of the skills that we require to be a whole rounded professional. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank, um, to commend and thank Chata Quest. You've set the bar very high. I think your vision of, um, of creating business leaders, the world that requires, will be realized sooner than expected. Well done. Thank you so much. Can we give her a hand, please? All right, next, for two minutes, I'm going to invite Professor Elias Links to make a brief statement. He's the patron, he's been the moral leader who has given us the inspiration to drive this vision forward. Thank you. Thanks very much. This has been an excellent experience for me. You know, you can be a professor, you can be an academic, but this type of leadership that you have here is second to none. They don't only do the accounting thing or the human resource thing. You have to be integrated. These guys have been dealing with an integrated case study that takes account of everything which a 
leader of a corporate has to take account of. And I want to say, if I had this type of exposure, I would have been <clears throat> number one. Don't take it wrong. But the point of the matter is, we have here people, young people from Australia, from Zambia, from Ghana. But don't forget, there were six finalists. So the other three teams did just as well. And the exposure that they get by being part of this is beyond any imagination. I would hire tomorrow any one of you to be in my corporate. And I want to thank you, Valentine, for the opportunity that I had to have this first one as patron. We're going to have many more. This is only the start. I would want this to be every year. Have a new patron every year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof. It's a moral inspiration. A new patron every year we will work towards that. It's a revolution we have started, not only for South Africa, not only for the continent. It is a global revolution. Now at this point, I will now invite the chief judge who has led the panel of judges very crucially over the last two days, partly as part of the jury at the John Universe Talk Exchange where he was part of the team and as the chief judge for the global finals and therefore the finals overall, sorry, as therefore the chief judge for the overall competition. He is no other than John Fedrix. CFO Finance Director of Telcom. So can we invite him on stage? He's going to give us a statement about his impressions, what the panel looked for, and how they came up with the final decision. We'll then allow him to call the winners in a particular order. First, the third will be called. We will celebrate them. Thereafter, the first two in any order would be called and put aside and then he would then make the announcement of who between the top two has carried the day thereafter professor elias links would come back to award the trophy we just did the organization of the competition we relied on the judges to make a ruling for ourselves i will now hand over the mic to dion fredericks thank you Thank you, Valentine. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a, it's a great honor, actually, to announce the winners. Um, at the start of this, I didn't believe we could have such a great experience. I think firstly, and it's been said previously today already, all six teams provide us with great presentations. Um, and if we go back, what's the biggest challenge in South Africa today? is skills. It's not accountants that can add one or plus one is two, but accountants that can step out of the number game and look from a business acumen at a solution. And that's what we experience with all the presentations. What did we look at? Firstly, on a high level, holistically and strategic management. How did they approach these different problems. The thing that I thought, and Valentine, I didn't share this with you, a bit unfair, there was so much information. I think most of the CFOs today here would have struggled with it. <laughs> and to, just to indicate how serious it is, when we did, the, lo the last three teams had to present this in three hours. One of the CFOs on the panel said, if I gave this to my team, they wouldn't have been able to give me such a quality presentation in three hours. The other things that we looked at specifically was teamwork. How, how do the team work together? 
strategic insight into these cases, innovation specifically, and making sure that they provide the best answer. The last three teams were very close together. It was very challenging to decide who's number one, who's number two, who's number three. And the nice thing about it, there was actually three different views that they gave us. And like we say in business, there's never one answer. There's always various answers and you need to select what's best for your company. And on that basis, we would have given first to all three. But unfortunately or fortunately in life, there must be a winner. And with that, I would like to announce the third place third place goes to team snipers <laughs> team snipers is from Ghana so let's give them another hand of applause please As I said, even the last two teams, we, we had a big challenge. And from an overall perspective, we have decided who the winner is. And the winner is Team Athenia. competition started with 320 teams, 1,278 aspirants entered the competition from 53 different universities around the world, five different continents, and 25 different countries. That is where it started seven months ago, and we are celebrating the final six and ultimately now the winning team. At this point, I am now going to invite Professor Links. It's your time. Professor Links, you need to collect the check. I am going to assist you if you permit me. I am also going to invite the head of ACCA South Africa to stand next to this check. I am going to invite you to go the other side. Prof, you should be ready to hold the check and pick up the trophy at the same time. And here is the interesting part. I am not going to be the one to formally hand in this trophy. I need my chief judge to also Right. It's been a full year working hard. We can now ask the prof I can assist you with. You can then formally invite them. I invite at this time the winners, the winners, Team Atena from Zambia. Please go ahead. Give them 
a chair. Celebrate your trophy. Please, can you give her, the team, a hand of applause? There we go. For 2016, the Charter Quest future CFOs and business leaders. Next year, see you when you get into the competition. Good luck. Thank you so much. Well done, Valentine. Well done, team. What an amazing way to conclude two days of learning and networking. A very, very big thank you to our sponsors. The CFO case study competition was conceived to become the premier and much anticipated annual global event that brings together students, entry level professionals, high schools, universities, professional bodies, policy makers, and big business for one purpose, to inspire the next generation of CFOs and global business leaders. The award gala dinner was testament to that. From top CFOs in the country, CEOs of SAICA, ACCA, country representatives, and young professionals came together to celebrate the winners. The CFO case study competition concludes every year by the winners blowing the kudu horn to open the JSC market, symbolizing the successful end of one edition and to launch open the following year's edition. Last year, this took special meaning as Africa's first global case study competition had just produced its first champions. Let's take a look. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, indeed the very heart of our economy. We'd like to extend a very special and warm welcome to the Charter Quest Institute and congratulate them on the 2016 CFO case study competition. It is a great pleasure to have you here with us this morning, um, and we feel very honored that we can, of course, share this event with you, of course, being the first um, competition of its kind and indeed the first competition that the Institute has put on. So thank you very much for sharing that with us this morning. Before I hand you over to our Chief Financial Officer, Arti Tarkudin, who will of course do the formal introduction, a very quick run through the program this morning. Uh, we look forward to hearing the keynote address, which will be done by Mr. Valentine Nti. Uh, Mr. Valentine uh, and T has the longest, uh, the longest title I've ever had to read. Um, he is, of course, the executive director of the CFO case study competition, and he is the founding CEO of the ChartaQuest Institute. So we look forward to hearing from Mr. T. Then we will have an explanation of the trading screens. Um, Andrea Marzo will, of course, be doing that for us. She is from Trading and Market Services. Um, a unique opportunity to see what the traders see on their side. I know the winning team from Zambia will enjoy that very much. So please do take note, and we can see exactly what happens when trades are executed. So we look forward to hearing from Andrea. And then, of course, we will invite uh, Mr. T. Um, and I must give a very um, specific mention to Anthena, who, of course, won the competition, um, and their team leader, uh, Mr. Nzwanza, I hope I got that right, um, who will join us on the stage and, of course, open the markets. Um, the markets, of course, wait for no man or woman, 
and they will start, we will start the countdown at 10 seconds to nine. So at 10 seconds to nine, I would like everyone to, to uh, raise your voices, to count down, help us count down to open the market um, this morning. Um, this is a unique opportunity because what you will be able to witness um, is we have done some very, very serious research, and of course the team here is under a lot of pressure. We've done some serious research to show that the way the markets perform that day depends on how well uh, these instruments are played on stage um, and the enthusiasm and vigor with which you do that. So we look forward to hearing you really beat the drum and, and sound the kudu horn. So ladies and gentlemen, um, before uh, we continue with the morning's proceedings, please do give a very warm welcome to our Chief uh, Financial Officer, Arti Tarkudin. Thank you, Nicole. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Africa's premier exchange. We are here this morning to celebrate our winners, our very top world-class winners, I must tell you, um, in the CFO case study competition. This is the first um, that Africa is hosting. Um, and a little bit about the competition. This is an annual and international management case study where candidates um, ranging from a number of um, financial professionals, predominantly entry-level financial professionals, um, university students, and essentially aspiring CFOs, so the pipeline of talent in our country and in the rest of the continent, are required to solve for real-life complex um, business problems in corporate Africa and so the business problem is not just complex, it's, it's got a financial element, it's got a strategic element, an operational element, and definitely um, a softer people element. I was privileged enough to be a judge, and at this point I must recognize my fellow judges we were, um, who are here today. We were also honored and privileged to be led um, by our lead judge, Dion Fredericks, who is group CFO of the Telcom Group. Um, he's also here today, so um, I must recognize and thank them. It was definitely an honorable something to be amongst um, these very well-seasoned um, pro finance professionals in our country. And so that just talks to the quality of this competition, that talks to the quality of the, uh, and the caliber of the winners as well. So I was definitely impressed by this, um, and I do feel like... Uh, like we are definitely set for better things in our finance um, industry in the country and in the continent um, on the back of this competition. I'm very passionate about the finance professional um, competencies and skills being pitched at the right level to be able to be successful in today's business world because I do believe that on the back of technology in our ever-changing world the finance professional um, competence and skills has definitely evolved over the last few decades and so these candidates talk to exactly those points and they almost manifest what we need in tomorrow's world of finance professionals so ladies and gentlemen, I cannot overemphasize the greatness that we are in the company of today. So to the um, winning team, I want to congratulate you and also share with you a little bit about why you are also in great company today. Because I know you will be proud to know that the JSE, for your inaugural competition um, celebration as well, as your chosen venue, um, according to the World Economic Federation, is ranked number one in the world for raising finance through the local equity market, for the protection of minority shareholders' interests, and for the strength in our auditing standards and reporting standards. So to the winners, you can be assured that you are in also the company of greatness. We are also third in the world for the quality as, um, of our regulation in the securities exchange. So best regulated exchange in the world for the last six years in either top one, two, or three um, positions as exchanges go. And so that is something we are also extremely proud of and proud of maintaining um, in our country. And so I must tell you that having gone through this experience, at first I thought, hmm, you know, it's probably underplayed by Valentine until I started reading the case study and started experiencing the candidates. And I tell you, it is right up there with any well 
oiled engine in terms of board performance, any strategic leader in, in business world today. And will, these guys will put a number of finance professionals that are already in the market with a number of years experience to shame, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is the caliber that we had. And all three of the, of the finalists were also neck and neck with each other. And these guys um, have come up tops. Um, and as a, as a neighbor to South Africa, who we are also very, very proud to be able to share that title um, uh, for this competition. And so well done. It is inspiring that we have young professionals with such talent um, so close to our doors. And so you're welcome any day um, to the JSE. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I now hand you over to our executive director of the CFO case study, Mr. Valentine T, the man who made it all happen. Well done. Huh? Well done. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our logo would have a slogan there grooming financially qualified business leaders. But let me just talk briefly about what we do as an institute. We help young people who aspire to become chartered. In the area of accounting and finance, you may have a master's degree, a PhD, unless you have some form of chartered behind your name, uh, chartered accountant, chartered management accountant, chartered certified analysts. Uh, these are all critical chartered professional designations that would set you apart and put you in a position to literally excel and be the best that you can be. Over the years, we have groomed and trained so many chartered accountants in all these various fields. We see the hard work and the pain that they put in order to become the best that they can be. And we have often wondered we live in a world where major entities make a major difference. Competition has become very global. The world has become increasingly integrated. We've often wondered, why is it that multinationals, when they're in Africa, they do so well, and our own companies in Africa do not seem to go all the extra mile and compete at the highest level? Maybe it's about time for us to begin to inspire our young people to stop benchmarking between themselves and benchmark themselves against the very best in the world. So when we started, we set out to say, we need a competition which is very global in its outlook. We need to be sure that the quality of education that is coming through from our education systems can be put to withstand the very best. Because if our kids, our young people, cannot, at the age of 22, 23, compete toe to toe against the very best from all the universities all over the world, what are the chances that when they grow up to become CEOs and CFOs of top companies in Africa, they will be able to withstand competition when it comes from outside the continent? So we would give them a platform to compete on a global scale, equal footing, go through a very rigorous process. When we started the process, 320 teams entered from 53 different institutions of higher learning and 25 different countries, five different continents. It doesn't get as global as that. The process started in November last year. This is round one. This is round two. These young people, they've come through a very rigorous process that starts with examinations, analyzing a very detailed and challenging case study full with opportunities, threats, and challenges that every modern day CFO, CEO would want to confront. They've impressed a panel of internal examiners, mostly made of lecturers from leading universities in the country, as well as lecturers from ChatterQuest. They've gone through a very rigorous process, and ultimately, they found themselves competing against the top six out of the 320 teams. They have set out at the Johannesburg Stock Asia at the semifinals, impressed the judges. They were part of the top three, 
from Ghana, from Zambia, as well as from Australia that went all the way to the global finals. And as you've heard from uh, the CFO of the JCIT, who was part of the panel, the quality was outstanding. They were able to show. Coming in, we saw the 16th, we had no idea who would be better than the other. We said, let's allow our judges to make up their minds. Team Athena from Zambia, they put their best foot forward. I sat there listening to them, how they grappled even some of the most challenging, intricate issues that we unpacked in the case today. When we finished, we thought, we waiting to see that team that would sit down, locked up for three hours, analyze these things, come forward with all the high stakes pressure and calmly persuade the board that they have the best solutions, the best thinking and the most wisest presentation. Now, Team Athena came out on top. Can we give them a hand of applause? It is through Team Athena that we look back and say, yes, there, is, there are pockets of excellence across the continent. It is going to be an annual spectacular. We expect it to be much bigger next year. We've received tremendous support on our road to this point. Notable ones that we need to always point out would be the Association of Charter Certified Accountants. They've been very fundamental in terms of helping us to get to where we are up to this point. There's been Telershaw that has been extremely supportive. There has been WSP Parsons Brinkhoff, which has also been extremely supportive. We call on big business to support the initiative so that we can give more and more opportunities for many of our kids in South Africa and across the continent, across the world, to bring out the best in themselves. We use this opportunity to challenge Team Athena. We expect this to be a life-changing event for them. We expect them, as they go back to Zambia, to become agents of change for their university, for their community, for their country. They are now the face and the ambassadors of the competition. We chatted with them the other day and said, we expect a lot from yourselves. We expect you to come back here next year if you are not taking part in the competition, we expect you to come back and hand over the trophy to the new team that's going to be winning. But we expect when you come back, you're able to display what progress you have made with your career, what contributions you've made during the last one year to your community. We hope that they can continue to be this inspiration. One day list their own company on the Lusaka Stock Exchange, grow that and list it here on this Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And why not all the way to NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange? So let's give them a hand of applause. I'll end by looking internally. It has been very challenging the last one year. We've got a formidable team of dedicated students and volunteers and executives who have been extremely supportive. Kada is actually here with us today. Just, and there is Stephen who has been the project manager, he's been instrumental in trying to make sure it works. Uh, there has been uh, patience, I want to call you the last. There's been three, our three students who took part in this competition. I need to always recognize their presence. There's Chego Fatso Makene. There's uh, Revelation Ramawela, and uh, is the justice here? Justice is not here today. But I save the last member of my team who has been the glue. I am just responsible for crafting the vision. There's been somebody who has been there to make sure that all this team of students, volunteers, and ex co of mine, they work to ensure we deliver a very successful competition. I will take that note to give credit to Patience Mokondo. Patience, can you just put up your hand? Can we give her a hand of applause and the rest of my team? On that note, I give you my word. This is going to be an annual event. We will come back to celebrate our next set of winners. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you can agree with me. Mr. T certainly speaks with passion conviction, um, and it is, it is really a wonderful um, honor to be with you and share in this vision with you for not just the African continent, 
um, well, specifically for the African continent, but in the context of the, of the global um, standards. So thank you very much for bringing this through. Um, I'd now like to introduce Andrew Marzel, who will explain the trading screens. Good morning and welcome to the JAC. My name is Andrea and I'm from the Trading and Market Services Division and we are responsible for managing the trading engines across all markets here at the JAC, being the equity market, the spot bond market, as well as all the derivative markets. The trading screen that you can see in front of you this morning is our market data front end and it has been sponsored by Iris. I will now give you a brief explanation of what it's all about. The blank area at the top of the screen that is our equity market ticker. It will update with trades as and when they occur in the market. You can see it is currently blank right now as we are in an auction call session and continuous trading will only start at 9 a.m. Below that is the ticker for the equity derivatives market. You can see that it is populated and is scrolling with trades as and when they take place as this market opened at 8.30 this morning. The gray area towards the middle of the screen is the trading information related to the JAC share, which has been selected for this morning's market open. Traders can uniquely identify the share by its code JSE. Important fields to note is open. That will be the first traded price for the day. It's currently blank. We'll watch that at just after nine. Um, other fields to note is your M price and your M vol. These are indicative as where the market will open. Um, we'll also be watching those. And then the market value, market vol, those are all daily stats will, that will update as and when the trades take place. The tables on the far left, the very far left, that is the order book, which is currently populated with all the bids and the offers in the market right now. And at 9 a.m. when the market opens, these will match and filter through then to the right-hand side table um, as a matched trade. On the far right, the two graphs, the top graph, that is the, um, will show you the trading activity for the JSC share for the day, and below that is the trading activity for the All Share Index over the last 12 months. Should you have any questions, feel free to chat to me afterwards, otherwise I'll hand back to Nicole, who will start preparing for the market countdown. Thank you. Thanks very much, Andrea. As she mentioned, if you have any questions, if you'd like to chat to Andrea afterwards, please feel free to do so. So now we're going to ready ourselves for the opening of the market. I'd now like to invite um, team Anthena up and, of course, Mr. T. Please join us on stage. Um, and we're going to have a few photographs taken. And then we, of course, are going to count down at 10 seconds to 9. Uh, please remember to join in and really enjoy yourselves. Um, it's not every day that you get to open a market. So we really like to see your enthusiasm and, of course, supporting not only this wonderful cause, but supporting the winning team. I think we'll do an internal drum roll while we wait for 10 seconds to 9. Um, Okay, join us now to count down any minute now, any second now from 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, Congratulations. I'd now like to invite Arti up and Mr. T so we can do the um, handing over of the trophy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do stay with us. Um, enjoy a breakfast with us. 
Um, and of course, we, we'd like to, um, of course, again, congratulate the team that has won. Um, I think the accolades that have been spoken about you speak for themselves. We wish you every success in the future. Um, and I did hear Ati say that you're very welcome to come back to the JC. So who knows, we might be working with you in the future um, and we wish you every, every success going forward. To Mr. T, thank you so much for your contribution and to the rest of you, have a lovely day forward. Thank you. Thank you so much viewers for joining us for yet another episode of the CFO case study competition series. This episode has come to an end and we have seen how the competition was concluded. This included the announcement of the winners, celebrations at the Michelangelo Five Star Hotel and the JSC Market Open event. In the next and final episode, we look at what the judges and other stakeholders involved with the competition had to say. If you need more information on how to book a seat for the October 2017 final event, or how to enter the CFO case study competition 2018, or even how to get involved and sponsor the competition at your will, please join us by following the link at the bottom of the screen. You can even follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I want to thank all of you, our guests, for being a part of the CFO case study competition series. We look forward to seeing you once again in the next episode.